Here it comes! 2D Mario! 3D Mario! It's irrelevant! It's all Mario! So let's tear all of it, shall we? Let's go. This is gonna take me an hour. Because I'm gonna have to explain everything. Alright! Fucking Mario 1! Beats here. Um, Mario 1 is a good game. Uh, that's about it. You know, Mario 1 exists. If you want to play a good game, Mario 1 is a good game. It started everything. It might be the end of everything if you think about it. You know, maybe when Nintendo finally gets, you know, tired of doing anything new whatsoever, they're just going to remake Mario 1 and HD and then delist it a year later and call that the last Mario game ever and Mario's legacy, yada yada. But, you know, for now, Mario 1. What more do I got to say about it? It's Mario 1. So it's, it's a good game. It's, I, I would even call it a nice game. But I, I, I can't really say that Mario 1 is like the best game ever or anything or that it, it should be any higher. I think for what it is, it's good and it's a very important game. It's the most important game on this list, but music is a little loud. Okay. Fair. Completely fair. There we go. It's 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 probably the most important Mario game. But like I don't know if I could like rank it any higher. I think I'm gonna stick with where I put it when I tiered it for the 2D Mario Marathon. I think that's the perfect spot for it. Next up! Lost Levels! You all know where it's going. I don't have to explain that shit, do I? This game is S! Fuck this game. I hate it. It's, it's just designed. It's so mean. Does this game need to be that rude? No. No, it doesn't. No game needs to be like this. This game doesn't need to be, like, made like this. It's not right. It's actually unethical. It's com completely... Com completely... Completely unwarranted. Not a fan of Leaps of Fate. I'm not a fan of much of this game. Gotta be real. It's it's really not good to me. I don't like it at all. I, I really don't like it. Anyways, next up, I played Mario 2. And it's going in the same spot it went last time. A plus, baby! Mario 2 is a good game. I just cut my own sentence off, but like... That's just how it is. Mario 2 is a good-ass game. This is the actual Mario 2 to me. This, as far as I'm concerned, as far as anyone's gonna tell me, this is the real Mario 2. I don't... I don't think I need to explain why this game is awesome. It's just good. The music is catchy. It's honestly completely beyond any right it has to have music that good. Considering it only has two songs, you'd think you would get sick of it. But, nope. The, that, the, the song is just so good that you could you put through the whole fucking game. And, good game. Uh, the playable characters are awesome. I just love, I love how the playable characters are different in this game. And all offer a unique gameplay experience. It's so good for new players. It's so good for veteran players. It's good for everybody playing the game because you get so much variety and so many ways to like approach different things in the game. Even though it's really simple at face value, it does change quite a bit. It's just good. Mario Brothers 2 is great. Mario Brothers 3! Boom! Um, it should come as no surprise that Mario 3 is up there in S tier. This tier list is going to be ordered, by the way. I'm going to order it after I get all the games in, so... Uh, but Mario 3 is my favorite game ever. This is my favorite video game. Super Mario Bros. 3 is literally my favorite game. So, obviously, it's going up there at the top. And not a question. It is... It's so good. Mario 3... If Mario 1 was, like, the most important Mario game, I think Mario 3 defined the identity of this franchise for like 
Not even for a certain amount of time, I think it just did. I think Mario 3 did deep, like, it's literally defined Mario. Mario 3 is like the baseline to which every Mario game after Mario 3 that has come out has set forth after. From a design standpoint, from a visual area, at least at a certain level. From a thematic perspective, everything that, that like people associate Mario with pretty much started at Mario 3. If it's not a general trend, anyways. Like, Mario's jumping, obviously. Arcade Mario I didn't play that game for the Mario-thon. Jalapeno, unfortunately. I'm only tiering the games that I played for the 2D Mario-thon and the 3D one. But... Yeah, no, Mario 3 is incredible. Just an incredible, incredible game. Moving on to Mario Land, I really hate to have to put it where I'm going to put it. Because Mario Land is an important, interesting game with so much good music. Really inspired visuals, to be honest. It introduced Daisy. There's so many good things about this game. At least at, a, at face value. But I don't think it's very fun to actually play. Um, Mario Land 1... I think is so close to being, like, a game that I would recommend, but I think the controls are just so weird in this game. Momentum doesn't feel like normal in Mario Land. It doesn't feel like you conserve any of it, nor does it feel like you have any, but Mario still goes fast anyways, and if that sentence makes no goddamn sense, it's because that's how much sense this game's physics make. Like, there is no weight to any movement you make in Mario Land 1. It... It feels sporadic and random and not consistent, and that's a problem. Um, the level design can be a little questionable in a lot of ways. They like to put invisible blocks, like, right next to... Right next to, like, pits. And more often than not, you're gonna hit them and just fall in and die. I think the shooter stages are the best parts of this game, because you don't have to worry about the controls not feeling right. Like, the controls just work in the shooter sections, so like, you don't notice the problems with the controls. And there's also only four worlds, which wouldn't be a big deal if the game was better, I think. But since there's only like, since it's not as good as any of the other Mario games, it's not only that, it's just short too. So I guess it doesn't waste your time if you're interested in it or you want to check it out. But, like, I don't know, Mario Land 1 just doesn't do it for me. But I think it's an important game, and I, I love what it tried to do. I, I respect and admire what it went for. Very, very much. But I don't think it pulled it off. I think ultimately it just kind of didn't really get there. But the music is amazing. Daisy is incredible. Thank you for inventing Daisy Game. Um... The aesthetic is really inspired. There's so much about it that is really cool, but, you know, it kind of just kind of bottoms out. Super Mario World. This one is hard because, on one hand, I feel like it deserves a certain credible ranking. On the other hand, I'm like really critical of some things in this game's level design, but I think, if I was being honest to my heart, and I spoke from the quality that I thought this game had, I'd put it in S2. Mario World is awesome. Um, I think it has a lot of shortcomings compared to pretty much all of the games in S2. It might even have the most out of all the games that are going to be there. Um, Mario World, though, I think deserves mention for having probably some of the best game flow in 2D Mario. Even if you ignore the cape, I think the spin jump, the way the movement is, the way this game controls is so incredible that like 
The level design kind of doesn't have to mold itself around it for it to be fun. I don't find the cape to be particularly interesting. But I think if you're, even if you don't ever like fly over every stage and skip all of it, there's a lot to engage with in an interesting way, I think. There are like weird quirks in certain levels. Like I know there's a cannon pipe in this game where when you shoot out of it, if you hold forward, you just die. You have to press nothing and bounce off a Koopa. It's one of the, like, the rare quirks in this game's level design. But like, I feel like in spite of the problems I do have with Mario World, including the fact that like it doesn't have the variety of Mario 3 and its power-ups or in its presentation, and that it like, in some ways it feels kind of like a step back from Mario 3, but like a step forward in other ways. So I think it kind of evens out. It just goes for something different. I love the world map. I love like the secret exits. I love that. I think that that all adds up to me to be a game that's worthy of the S tier position that I'm giving it. So I think Mario World is just really that good of a game. Like there's a reason that Mario 3 versus Mario World is like an actual like debate. There's merit to that conversation. That's a sensible conversation to have. It's like a comparison that you could absolutely make and will probably be able to be made forever. Because these two games both are just incredible games. But, I'm gonna surprise everybody when I pull this shit out. We're at Mario Land 2 and this is probably gonna be one of the more controversial placements on this list. But... I'm putting Mario Land 2 above Mario World, right below Mario 3 right now. I think Mario Land 2 is that good. I have a lot to explain involving this, but I think Mario Land 2 is actually that good of a game. Mario Land 2 is like, maybe the highest jumping quality in a Mario game? From, from like a sequel standpoint. I don't think any other follow-up iteration has been so much fucking better than Mario Land 2 compared to Mario Land 1, and I don't think it's even close. Like, if there was ever a follow-up game that just hit it out of the park in this franchise, it would definitely be Mario Land 2, I think, compared to its predecessor. In my opinion, of course. I think Mario Land 2 fixes basically every single problem with Mario Land 1. Every single one of them. The length? That's not a problem. The controls! Oh my god, the controls in Mario Land 2 are so much better. The level design is better. Everything's better. There's more power-ups, there's more level variety. The music is awesome in Mario Land 2. Mario Land 2's music is fucking great too. Like, it doesn't do anything worse than Mario Land 1, it only does things better. And, this game introduced Wario. Like, come on, Wario is from this game! That's, that's a big deal to me, Wario is amazing. This game is responsible for like, four Wario games that are bar none incredible. Just excellent games to play. I don't feel like the screen crunch is a big deal. I mean, I understand it, and I think that's not untrue. But I feel like the game was designed really, really consciously around that. But I do agree that, like, maybe the worst thing about this game is that it's on a Game Boy. Because, like, the backgrounds and the level design ideas are so, like, unique to this game. This game's got, like, such an identity. Even compared to things like Mario 3 and Mario World, this game really stands on its own in terms of, like, making a statement that only it makes with regards to its visual design and, like, the choices it has for, like, level theming. It's so bizarre and weird and odd, and I think that's a really, really appreciate, like, a trait that I can really, really appreciate. And I feel like if it was on a better system, for instance, like the Super Nintendo or something, I can only imagine how, how, how like detailed and amazing it would have looked, but like, for what it is, for a game on the Game Boy, 
I think the fact that it achieved what it did is incredible. And I think that it is better than Mario World. In my opinion. Like, I like it more. To me, to me, I enjoy it more. I, I think that the character and the charm that Mario Land 2 has is, is so excessively, like, overjoyous that it's enough for me to, like, displace any criticism. Like, just the visual- like, this game is so striking, it's so interesting to look at. Every time I play Mario Land 2, it is constantly engaging. Because even now, even after all of these Mario games and all of these sequels and fucking Mario Odyssey, Mario Land 2 still stands out. That's something that I, I think is really, really strong. But all those years later, it's still just as standout as it was when it came out, I think. Compared to every other Mario game. That uniqueness is what makes it good, I think. I think, anyways. So on this tier maker, the next one is NSMB. So, I do need to explain that I do think that New Super Mario Bros. 1 is a really good game. In, in, in many ways. Like, in, in many ways, it is a good game. Um, but I just don't think it feels that good to play anymore. It could have just been the way I, I played it. It might have just been, at the time, it just didn't really resonate with how it controlled and how it felt. But like, I don't know, I couldn't get into it. Maybe, maybe it should go here. I think B- is fair. But... It feels like a curiosity game at this point. Like, you would go to this game, not necessarily because you were expecting... Like, the best quality you're gonna get from this New Super Mario Bros. franchise. Sub-franchise, I guess. But more to see how it started and what... What made this game interesting at the time it came out. Because basically every other NSMB game that isn't one in particular, if you just visit that one, it will give you a better experience. And then you can just play one of them and then not play the other three. But I don't think NSMB 1 is the game you'd do that with. It's a game that I think you would go back and look at. I think the way it hid the worlds was really wacky. I don't like having to beat bosses with a mini mushroom to just access levels in the game. Um, the star coin system was a little strange. Uh, the level design was okay. The aesthetic wasn't particularly gripping. I think it was really held back by the aesthetic. The music is quite good in NSMB DS though. For a DS game in particular, but also just like, on its own, the castle theme in this game is absolutely amazing but I just don't think it stands on its own two feet as like its own Mario experience I don't think it's it's that fun like it's enjoyable but you, you probably wouldn't catch me going back to it for anything more than like nostalgia for when this game first came out because I loved NSMB when it was new and I was young but nowadays I don't feel like it clicks with me like that anymore. And that's a little sad for me, but it is what it is, right? We grew out of this stuff sometimes. Other things come out, you know? Our perspective changes as we grow. But I don't regret going back and revisiting it for this 2D Mario Marathon. I think it was worth it. It was fun. I don't think it ruined the game for me, but I do think it, like, reminded me that, like, the reason I hadn't gone back to it anytime recently was because there's not much there. For me, anyway. But. You see my brother's Wii. So, 
I think if you're going to play a new Super Mario Brothers game, there are only two choices that you should really tangibly make, and both of them are the console games. The first one is NSMB Wii, so let's talk about that one right here. I think this game is pretty damn good. I think for a 2D Mario game on the Wii, it's the only one. But at the time it came out, I do think it was somewhat unique. It brought back the Koopa Kids for the first time in God knows how long. At least a decade. Uh, Yoshi was reintroduced after his absence in NSMB DS. Many new power-ups came in this game. This game did something that I really liked, which was add a lot of new power-ups to the game. Even if some of them were kind of just broken, like the propeller suit, which is obviously cheap. But like the penguin suit was a cool fusion of the frog suit and the other new power-up they added, which is the ice flower, right? The penguin suit was like that combined with the frog suit, which was cool, and the Koopa shell too, because you could slide with it. The ice flower was a neat different take on the fire flower that, you know, synergized well with the game's newfound ability for Mario to pick things up in different ways. The multiplayer was super interesting and really cool. But I think it, it kind of just is, you know? This is a game that really just is there. And the design is quite good, but like... You know, it's hard to say much about this game beyond what I just said. Its presentation is good, the music is quite nice in this one as, as well. Like, the DS1 and this one have pretty good music. For what it's worth. I, I wouldn't say the whole soundtrack, but like, it's it's listenable. It's pal palatable music. For a 2D Mario game. The pacing is good enough. Um, there's lots of secrets in the game. The post-game is pretty beefy and honestly isn't bad to go through. But, uh... Yeah, that's about it. It's a solid game. I think it's better than Mario 1, too. Obviously, I think it's better than Mario 1. But... That's about the most I can say about it. And now we're here. <laughs> I think everybody knew this game was gonna go there. Um... New Super Mario Bros. 2 might be the most bland Mario game I've ever played. And I don't mean that as like a really big insult. But I think this game lacks like any kind of notable identity whatsoever besides the fact that it just showers you in coins. Um, the DLC I hear is okay, if not great. Like, the DLC could be the best thing in the world for this game, but, like, that's maybe an hour of gameplay. And it's also DLC, which implies that I would have to, like... If your DLC, which is just, like, a level pack, is the most notable thing about your game, and it's not, like, the other fucking eight-plus worlds that are in your game... Like, where do I start with this one? It has a gimmick that is absolutely completely meaningless. That, from the from the jump, it's already just like why. You you collect lots of coins, but one ups still work the same. So you're just showered in money. And you're, you're showered in money, and you're showered in extra lives. And the game never does anything with the amount of coins you get. Like, the coin total you have is absolutely meaningless. There's no mechanic associated with it outside of 1-ups. There is no purpose to getting all of these coins outside of excessive amounts of 1-ups. Like... So that entire thing that this game is designed around you stopping and doing all the time, which is maximizing your money count, is not utilized at all in the game. The design never really looks at it critically or does anything with it. And if you stop playing this game to get the coins, what you are given is maybe some of the most barren and like 
lacking levels I've played in this franchise. There's not much to do in these besides maybe hunt for star coins. Otherwise, if you're not engaging with the whole act of collecting all the coins, then like you're you're not engaging with a huge chunk of what the game was designed for you to do in it. But when it doesn't do anything interesting, what's the point, right? I don't understand. The power-ups in this game are lame. I'm gonna come out and say that right now too. They are lame, because there's only two of them. You've got the Tanuki suit, or the raccoon suit, I don't even think it was the Tanuki suit to be honest, and the fire flower. The only other power-up in this game besides those two is the gold flower, I forgot to mention that, but it doesn't show up a lot and it's also, I believe, temporary. If I'm not mistaken. Okay, let me look that up. Let me make sure. It's been a while since I played it, so I want to be accurate. <coughs> Alright, it's not temporary, but all it is is a fire flower that turns shit into coins. Which, great. Fantastic. Cool. Those, those coins, those things that you really do anything with in this game. Absolutely. That thing that you're not already fucking showered in, in this goddamn game. The music is horrible. The music is fucking horrible in this game. I, I would go on record to say that it is actually an active detriment to this game. I'm going to pause the Mario Odyssey music, and I'm going to open up New Super Mario Bros. 2 music. And I want you to just compare it. I don't feel like it's fair. It, it can't be fair. But, like, I'm going to anyways, because I am completely interested in just anyone's opinion on how the fuck this This won't drive you insane. Because the whole game soundtrack is like this. All of it. And after two other games of music like this but less annoying, this drove me up a fucking wall. Because I got this far into this marathon, this 2D Mario marathon, and then I had to put this shit through a headset into my brain directly. Which might have made it worse. That might have that might be why I think so lowly of it. But I think this is like It's almost comedic. Like Why? And even the castle music got worse in this game. Like, at first, you think it's fine. What is keeping this from not being bottom tier? Um, it's playable. I think when I compare it between this... If, if you told me I could... If I had to play, like, a game for a day, and you said, between these two, which one would I pick? I would probably pick Mario 2. My new NSMB 2. Yeah, they added buzz to every single song that was not the underwater thing. It sounds awful! The literal best song in this game is the credits theme. Which, I will fully admit, the new Super Mario Bros. 2 credits theme is awesome. This might be the one song that I would say you should listen to. This song, this, this, this is a good song. Like, this song just sounds like vaguely Mario Sunshine music, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Like, there's just, like, a niceness to this song. I like this song a lot, actually. This, this credits theme is fucking godly. 
But like every every other song in this game drives me insane. Every other song. But this credit theme fucking goes. I wish the whole soundtrack was like this! If this was like the whole soundtrack direction, holy shit! Could you imagine? That'd be so cool. Instead we got what we got. And uh well, you know. But whatever. I'm just not big on it. I'm not big on it. I don't mean to disrespect the people that worked on this game. I know a lot of people like this game, or at least some people I know do. And that's perfectly fine, but for me it just didn't do it. We're just gonna turn Steam Gardens back on now. Thank you. I'm sure there's there's no objections to Steam Gardens? Anyone? No? No objections to the song? Good. Uh, alright. So, that is where NSMB2 goes. Right there. Uh, okay. We're, we're, we're looking to close out the 2D Mario games. Alright, here it is. NSMBU, right there. So, to clarify, if I was looking at just the level design, nothing else, like strictly in a vacuum, completely just devoid of any other possible criticism I could make of a game, without question, like just nothing else. Talk about nothing else but the level design on its own and like the feeling of going through a level. It would probably be below Mario 2. But, every other part of what makes a game a game is in this game. And I have to talk about it. This game is like the closest the new Super Mario Brothers series got to having like a really interesting direction. But only in like a few areas. And that's why it stings so much and why I can't put it in A+, because... If you know me, I don't like it when things are close. I like it when things are there. And I, and I don't mean that, like, it had to get it just right. But I mean, like, when something is, like, still stuck without having, you know, an identity or, like, a distinct identifying trait, I have so much trouble really vibing with it. And I think this game almost becomes like its own thing. There are a few levels in this game in particular that really, really have like so much creativity put into them, so much thought, that it's such a shame that by the end of this game, it kind of just feels like I'm playing the game right below it, but better. Which means obviously I have to put it higher than New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Is the on-stream chat broken? Oh, cool. I guess it's because I did that. Hold on. There we go. How's that? There we go. But because it is better than the Wii game, because there's no motion controls, there's no shaking, there's none of that shit, um, you just press the button to spin, and that feels great. Like, spinning feels good, it works well, um, the level design is top-notch, probably the best it's ever gotten. But, like, all that polish doesn't matter when, like, the visual quality and, like, the general way the game catches your eye just doesn't do it. And I think there's nothing more squandered than this game having the last world take place in, like, an evil-looking version of Peach's Castle. Which is like, holy shit, we might have something interesting here. This might be a cool World 8. And then you open the first stage, you get in there, and it just looks like World 8 from this game. The map! The fucking map has a more interesting idea of, like, things to do with the levels than the actual levels do. 
it hurts, because it's like, this could have been really neat. But here we are. It just looks like Bowser World. Like, they just used this as a surrogate for Bowser World. They fucking remixed the Mario 64 castle lobby theme. And they make this castle look nothing like Peach's castle? When you get to the levels? Like, what? By the time it starts looking like it, it's just like... I don't know. And there's some cool levels in this game. There's a pastel painting level. But the entire jungle world is fucking great. All of that world is super interesting. The branching path system is pretty neat for the early game too. I like the way the secret exits can take you all across the map. But like, once you get past world 5, that problem of sameness just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's, it's what stops the new Super Mario Bros. games from being any better. And to be quite honest with you, I feel like it should go there. I just have such a hard time, because it's like... If you just played this game, and you didn't play any of the other new Super Mario Bros. games, it could probably go an A or even A+. So it's hard. It's really fucking hard. But I think it belongs right there. I think especially after playing all these 3D Mario games, this game's like lack of real draw and its visual quality is really, really apparent. Maybe... I think I'll leave it there for now. To be nice, but... I just don't know about this one. Like, it's, it's hard. Now, I think that's all the 2D Marios, right? Uh, I'd have to look at my old tier list again, but I feel like I've gotten all of them. So, I think now we go to 3D, don't we? This is where the chaotic elements of this tier list start to come in, because now we've got to start tiering the 3D games alongside the 2D Mario games, and that's really hard. So, let's start with Mario 64. We're going to go in order. Um, Mario 64... Oh my fucking god. I'm already having a, a conundrum here. This is difficult. Because obviously, I don't know. It, this is really hard. Oh my god, this is really difficult. When I said I was going to choose Chaos, I guess it just meant for me because I really don't know. I'm going to question this internally for so long. Like, I'm not even going to be able to answer, like... People when they ask, like, why'd you put that above this? I'm literally just going to have to say it was based on my heart at the time because there's like no way. Outside of a few things, like, this this could shift around so much in, like, any matter of minutes. But I think for right now, I would put it right there. Mario 64 is an amazing game. It is also my first video game ever. This game is the reason I'm playing video games today, which might be a bad thing depending on how you look at it. It may have impacted my productivity, but considering I'm a university graduate, who graduated with honors? Maybe not. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't look at it in such a sad way. But it, it, for better or for worse, set me on the path I'm on now, I like to think. When it comes to video games, what I like in games, my interest in this medium. So, when I'm tearing this game, I have to think to myself and understand that almost all of like the qualities I would attribute this game with are like rooted in a place of bias in my heart 
because like how could I not love the game that made me love video games? It's really hard not to like put it up there because no matter what kind of warts or pimples or whatever is on its design, it's like this this game matters so much to me that I feel like ranking it low lower than like really high up would be like doing my heart a disservice. So I think right here is a good spot. I think this game is excellent. For a first crack at 3D, it's honestly amazing that this game turned out the way it did, because... It's just like... How did this game invent everything? Even ignoring, like, the quality of, like, the game, the rough spots, whatever, it's honestly mind-blowing how much this game literally just innovated on and made because like so much about like 3d platformers and 3d games in general owes a lot to this game like this game is important like really really important it's like Mario 1 and Mario 3 in that regard. It's just... To me, it's incredible. To me, it's a fucking masterpiece of a game. For the time it came out... And even now, I think, a lot of its design principles... What they attempted do hold up. I think some of them don't. I think some of them really don't. But, like... So much of what it was grasping at is stuff that people, like, love. And still love. So I think it would only be fair for me to put it in S tier. I, I love this game so much. It's incredible. I love it. Mario 64 is... The movement is so fluid for what it is. It's a bit kind of rough in some ways, but like, the things you can make Mario do in this game are nothing short of unreal. And the game really rewards you for experimenting with Mario's moveset and learning it through and through. It's just so insanely rewarding in this game compared to every other Mario game. Currently on this list anyways. We'll get further on, but... I. Th Right? Like... Tomb Raider? And then you look at, like, fucking... Like, that was what they had. And then you look at just how much Mario 64 did, and it's like... Holy fuck, where, where would we be without this game? I honestly couldn't tell you. When it comes to 3D platformers, this game, like... My god. What an important piece of work. So... It, it brings me joy to say that I, as a game... To this day, I still love it very dearly. But I also don't hate Tomb Raider, obviously, but like, it's just, could you imagine? And I couldn't, I couldn't. But, Super Mario Sunshine. Now, my opinion on this game has shifted a lot, which is really weird because I've spent like what feels like the past week shitting on it, but I do think that Mario Sunshine is also extremely important for Mario. And I think that looking at it as a full experience, the time I spent with it, I think, was more fun than not. But it was almost all at the expense of the stability of the game, I think. And that the only time I really wasn't having a good time in Mario Sunshine 
was probably the hotel level. Serena Beach, not fun. Really not a fun stage at all. But the rest of the game? I... It was, like, rough. It was really rough. But, like, in a way that I could appreciate. Because it feels like it was really close to being something really incredible. And Mario Sunshine did do a lot of shit right. Mario Sunshine's hub world is incredible. The setting of the game is really interesting. I, I think that every level does have that problem where it looks kind of the same. But the way in which it constructs itself as a world, and like... Just the way that the environments feel to traverse and explore, as a place. I think it has a very good sense of place. And I think that that is something that it did that Mario 64 didn't do. And I again, I love Delfino Plaza, I love the hub world so much. But where this game is really let down is its progression system by the end is completely meaningless because the only shines that matter are Mission 7 in every stage. You can't unlock Corona Mountain unless you've beaten Mission 7 in every level, which means that over half of the game's shine sprites that you're collecting, unless you're going for an 100% completion file, they are useless. And that's a big problem because that constitutes blue coin shines, that constitutes all the shine sprites in Delfino Plaza, including the ones that are really fun to get, which is most of them in that area. That includes all of the Mission 8 shines. That includes... All of that shit, right? No, it's okay, Robin. But I think that, like, truly... That's kind of how I feel about this game. It's like... If Corona Mountain was unlocked at about 70 shines, and I never had to worry about Mission 7 in every stage, and I could just completely ignore Serena Beach and just do all the other shines that I like doing in the game and then beat it, Mario Sunshine would probably be up here. Even with the problems that I have with it. It would probably still be in B-, if not right there. But... I think the fact that you're forced to complete so much in this game that I don't think is particularly fun and the fact that if you're not going for 100% you're sort of railroaded into doing specific things every time you play the game which completely goes against the, the fun and fluidity of the progression system in any other 3D Mario game like this. Um, I don't think it does it. I don't think it's good for that. And I think that's that's what makes it kind of weak to me. It means you have to enjoy so much of this game to really play it. And if you don't enjoy a lot of it, or you don't enjoy a lot of what it wants you to do, then you're kind of stuck at a point where it, it's hard to do anything but appreciate some of the ideas it had. And I mean, shit, this game is also, like, the reason they kept using sidekicks to give Mario new powers and new ways to traverse, like, fields. If Mario Sunshine wasn't a thing, Cappy probably wouldn't exist. Or the Lumas that let you spin around in Galaxy. I think those those are all like byproducts of that design trend that Sunshine sort of introduced. It's just way more refined in those games and those games are paced differently. But like Mario Sunshine was an important learning game, I think, for future 3D Mario games and I think if this game didn't fly as close to the sun as it did, Mario's wings would not have regrown into such fantastic... into such like fantastic games that came out after this one. So, all things considered, Mario Sunshine, more than a bad game, more than a good game, it's a very mixed game to me. And I think that at the end of the day, I've come to respect it so much more as a game, but I probably still will not go back to it ever. But I think it's an important game, and I don't think I would feel comfortable rating it alongside a game like New Super Mario Bros. 2 
which has had virtually no lasting impact on any Mario franchise. So, yeah, I think it can go along next to Mario Land 1, which is another really important game that just isn't super fun to play. The next 3D Mario game that came out is Mario 64 DS, and it goes here. It's a version of 64. The physics don't quite feel as snappy or good in this one, unfortunately, and um, a lot of the added content feels a bit... how do I put it? Just kind of there to pad it out. Not padding, I don't think it's padding. I don't think it's like useless, but a lot of it is just here's a star you could have gotten way earlier in the original game, but you have to wait till you get Wario or something to get it now. Or here's a star where you could have gotten it with Mario in the original game, but you need Luigi now. Or like it's like an insubstantial amount of extra backtracking that I don't feel benefits the game that much. And another problem I had with it having gone back and really looked at what I experienced with it, I really do feel like the additional characters don't add much to the game. Because they don't... none of them feel finished. And when I say this, I don't mean this in a bad way, but it feels like they clipped parts of Mario's moveset and spread them across, like, four characters, instead of making four characters that felt finished. Mario being the only one that can wall jump feels odd. Luigi running on water is really cool, and his athleticism is really nice in this game. But, like, it feels like... Like, if you pick Luigi, you still have to go back and switch to Mario for a bunch of missions, because you can't wall jump, and you can't do certain power-ups, and... Like, they split up things like the caps between characters, and it's just confusing and odd. Wario feels like shit in this game. Wario! And Wario's cool. This game having a playable Wario is awesome. Why does he feel terrible? Almost everything you use Wario for is like breaking bricks that Mario arbitrarily can't break and like metal cap stars. Like... It would just be so much better if all the characters could just do shit. Like, in a game like this, where... You know, you're, you're driven to explore... And... Make progress, and do meaningful, like... You know, exploration. It feels like fucking... Like, why? It would be just... it's just odd to me, this game. But I think they DK64 it is a fair way of putting it, but I... I don't feel like it suffers the way Donkey Kong 64 suffers. But... I think it's like a relative thing. Like... I think that's fair. But the new shine or the new shines, oh my god. The new stars don't also don't feel like particularly wild. The switch stars are neat, I like them. I don't know if I'm big on the fact that they added another star to every Bowser stage. I don't feel like that was necessary. I feel like the red coins in those were already enough to do. Maybe I just don't like The mini games are awesome. Honestly, the minigames are a big part of why it's up there, too. I, I actually really like the minigames in this game. I think the side content they added was incredibly good. Like, the extra levels, too, are neat. I like the Mario Sunshine reference one. I like the King Goomba levels. I like, like, the levels where you rescue Luigi and Wario. I think those are great. Um, the added content to this version of the game is actually really good. The minigames especially, I love those. Many an hour were lost to those DS minigames. I'm talking about 64 DS. But like many an hour were, were lost to those 
dumb, silly little games. The Luigi card game, when I was younger, oh my god, played the hell out of that. The... Almost all of Wario's games were really fun, Mario's were good. I, I spent an insubstantial amount of time on almost all of them, really. I think Luigi's ended up being my favorite. But, like, they were all just really, really excellent. Ways to incentivize exploring the castle with the other characters. While also not feeling... What's the word? Tacked in? They, they, were, they were fun. I think they're, they're a good addition to the game. They're enough to be to where I feel like they do kind of influence the rating. Because it's part of the game. It is a part of the game. It's part of the port. So, overall though, it's a, it's a good port. I think it's definitely better than an SMBU. But I think like the little things they did to the game control um, definitely impacted the quality of the 64 game and the way the characters work in the environments don't really gel well with me overall. What? As a full package, I think it's it's a good way to play Mario 64. There's a lot of QOL improvements, there's a lot of little changes. I actually really like the art direction in this game. Outside of, like, maybe one or two enemies looking kind of new and weird in a way that I don't like, I think overall SM64 DS is really charming. I don't think it disrespects the original vision much at all. I think it's really good about being careful about that. I think it's good. I think it's adequately good. If I had to rate it, I would, I would say that. Where are we next? Galaxy! Alright! Uh, Mario Galaxy is really good. I don't think it's S, unfortunately, for it. But I think it's really damn good. Um, what more do I say about this one? I like the environments. I like the aesthetic this game has. I think the big thing that makes it not S for me, and the big thing that's holding it back from being up that tier is that I think the beginning of this game, while really pretty and interesting, is kind of slow. I think this game hits its stride right around the third hub area, I would say. <coughs> Like, the third hub area is where it starts to really shine. The level design gets more interesting, the stars get more interesting to collect. The music gets better and better the further in you get. The atmosphere gets better and better the further in you get. It is definitely a game that the more, the further in you get, the more interesting the risks the risks taken become. And I think it's a really interesting direction for 3D Mario in general. Because this was the first time they decided to kind of scale it back and take it to a more like linear approach, I want to say. You know, they, they decided, you know... You know, we want it to be good, but like, we obviously don't want to do Sunshine again right now because we don't feel really confident in that right now. So they kind of just scaled it back a bit, but then introduced a whole bunch of other new stuff. And they were very, very careful to not make the aesthetic watered down. And the result was an excellent game. Mario Galaxy is a damn good game. It makes good use of the Wiimote, it makes good use of the controller, it feels good to play, the orbitals are fun to experiment on. It's just good. 
Right? Like, it was definitely made for the Wii audience as well, right? That, that's a big, big part of it. I got the time. It was it was it was made to captivate that crowd and be a lot more accessible, right? Especially after Sunshine required you to beat so many hard missions to just clear it. So when you consider all that, I think this game did a damn good job. <clears throat> uh, Galaxy 2. <laughs> I know. Did I really put it below Mario World? Yep. My S tier is a little crowded, but you know. That might just be how I feel. If I feel it's too crowded, I could just move World and Galaxy 2 down. Fine. Galaxy 2 is. I think it's a better game than Galaxy 1. But I do think that Galaxy 1 does kind of have... Uh, how do I put it? A more inter It's not even more interesting aesthetic so much as it is a more captivating one. I think Galaxy 2 is a lot fluffier in its presentation. And I love it for that. I love that it's like really bright and colorful and funny and quirky. But it doesn't feel as enriching as Galaxy 1 in that way. But the structure of the game is really, really good. The way you go from level to level, uh, the hub worlds isn't really a big factor in the game anymore. It's kind of just there. But you also don't interface with it enough for it to be annoying. Because Galaxy 1 did have a hub world, but you didn't do much in it besides go to another pull star and pick a level. But this one focuses all that onto a world map, and I think it works better for the game. They also um, trim down the pacing. You generally make more progress in Galaxy 2 quicker, I would say. But that's because each galaxy only has like two or three stars instead of like six, the way Galaxy 1 had per galaxy. As a result, there's more levels in this game, too. So when you think about it like that, there are more. There's like more. More more Galaxy! And this game's internal title was just called Super Mario Galaxy More at one point. But... I think the reason I put it below Mario World is because... I don't know, I, I think Mario World is really good. <laughs> I like Mario World. Look, it's hard to explain what I like better about Mario World, but I do think it, it, it's kind of like when you're like ordering these games in S tier, it's almost always the minutia, like the, the really minute shit. The stuff that like, like really, 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 really like insubstantial, like insubstantial stuff that I wouldn't consider to be like. Basically, it's like interchangeable almost, outside of Mario 3 at the top. Because like, almost any little thing I'm gonna say that separates these games is just like... It's like a grain of sand, almost. But like, I, I kind of like the pacing of Mario World better, I think it's a more brisk game. Um... It's, it's, it's... I just, I just like it more, I think. I like the way Mario World approaches its design structure more than Galaxy 2, which is impossible to really quantify in a way that makes sense because trying to compare those two games when they do almost nothing alike is like, what the fuck are you talking about, old man? Go back to bed. But like, I think you get what I mean. It's little shit. But I think that that's why I would- I think I would play Mario World again before I'd play Galaxy 2 again. If, if that makes any sense. 
but it's not because Galaxy 2 isn't a good game. Far from it. It's just where I sit. But for for all the game that it is, Galaxy 2 is fucking phenomenal. It's like picking between a perfect meal and a perfect meal. Which perfect meal do you like more? Right? Like Okay, Mario 3D Land, though. I feel like these two being in the same tier as each other... ...is nothing short of how I feel about these games. But I think if I had to pick between which one I'd play more... ...I think it would be 3D Land. Like, it definitely would be 3D Land. What can I say about Mario 3D Land? What was it? What was it that I said when I was playing it? I'm going to forget this game after I beat it. I already couldn't tell you what I did in that game, to be quite honest with you. That one was like, I think Sleep Mode, who was my guest star at the time on that stream, fucking excellent fellow. My favorite Australian. Um, he put it best when he said that this game is just like an except Mario 3D Land is like an acceptable amount of Mario. Like it's not an astounding Mario, it's not like an incredible Mario, it's not a game-changing Mario, it's not a game that you're gonna remember a lot of. But it's an acceptable amount of Mario, and in that way it's enjoyable. But I think, as a memorable Mario experience, it is kind of a letdown, because I don't remember most of it. It's big problems about its aesthetic kind of never goes anywhere. And, like, it's almost impossible to identify what makes each level different. And you could argue that the 2D Mario games that I've ranked way up here don't have, or have that problem too. But I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like it's it's more distinct in these games, in Mario 3 and Mario World, than it is here. But I don't think 3D Land is a bad game. I just think it's unremarkable. It's like a... It, but it wasn't meant to be a big game either, right? I think it's it's a respectable amount of Mario because it was meant as a 3DS like early year title. It's meant as an early 3DS title meant to showcase the power of the system and show off the 3D effect. And for all that it wanted to do, I think it did everything it wanted to do. I don't think it failed on that front, so I can't really put it any lower than B or B minus. But I don't think it really aspired to do anything either. And games like that, I just kind of forget I played. When you can't, like, tell what the idea was or, like, what they were really going for. What was its aspiration, right? But I think if you like this game a lot, I can understand why. I might not feel the same way, but I completely get it. Because it's not a bad game. Like, outside of one stage that I thought was a really annoying auto-scroller with no checkpoint. I didn't run into any levels in this game that made me think, damn, what the hell were they thinking? It was just well put together, but really unremarkable. Music was good, though. I like the music. I like the visuals of the game. I like the sound design. But that's, that's as far as I'd go with it. The one I just finished, Mario 3D World. Um, all right. So,
I think this is an acceptable location for Super Mario 3D World. I think it's really close between Mario 2 and 3D World. This is like... This is a fight to the goddamn death. Because these two games, despite their vastly different design philosophies, do have a very, very important common thread, which is, you know, the, the playable characters aspect of the game being one of the strongest parts of it, right? That is that is the strength, in, in some ways, of its design that it stands on. Because Mario 3D World is wonderful. It's a wonderful 3D Mario game. Probably the best level design of any of these games here, I would say, of, of this big chunk. I think 3D World is the pinnacle of, like, clean design in that regard. Like, I don't think... I think compared to the other games, even, the design in 3D World is masterful. I don't think there is any question of the quality of its make, or its design, or its enjoyability. But I think it really comes down to, like... What I'm looking for when I play Mario. But I think... In my heart... I think this game does win out over Mario 2. In spite of where I started its placement... I do think that this game definitely wins out over Super Mario Bros. 2. I think it's really close. I don't think it's, like, free. I think that's a really, really, really highly contested spot, and I think it just manages to scrape by. But I think it's largely the post-game content. Rosalina is a playable character with a really fun gameplay element added to it. The general polish and quality of the Switch port. Bowser's Fury on top of all that, and if you like Bowser's Fury, that's another four hours on a game that's already fucking phenomenal. So really... It, it would be hard for me not to put it over Mario 2, I think. Just looking at what the game offers you and what the game gives you... I think I would have to do that. It would feel wrong if I didn't. It just wouldn't be right. So I think that's what I'm going to go with for that. But damn is it hard. Kind of like how hard this is going to be. Because this is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets really goddamn hard. Because the next 3D Mario game on the list, Super Mario Odyssey, and we all know what tier it's going in, but the real question is, is Mario Odyssey better or worse than Mario Land 2? And that's where I'm like, I'm just seizing up right now, because like... Fuck, that's a hard question. <laughs> like, that's, that's such a goddamn hard question to answer. Which one do I like more, right? I think I'm gonna have to go with that. Fuck, that's hard. But, Mario Odyssey. Um. It's 
that's a really good game. <laughs> it's my favorite 3D Mario game. I don't have any question admitting this. I think it lives up to, like, all the things that, when I played Mario 64 as a kid, that I wanted. I think that is my criteria for judging it, and, you know, there are... Mario Odyssey has problems. It, like any other video game ever made, there are insubstantial issues with it that people have found. And I fully acknowledge that. I will bear that weight on my chest. It is probably a more wrinkly game than Mario Galaxy 2. It probably has more design issues than 3D World or Galaxy 1 even. Maybe even any of these other games that I've tiered below it. But I think what Mario Odyssey succeeds at makes those problems, to me, completely insubstantial. <laughs> And just truly negligible in the face of what I consider to be one of the best Mario experiences, period. I think this game is absolutely a fucking delight from start to finish. No matter how much you complete on it or decide not to complete, I think you... You will have a damn good time with this game. I think there are... Maybe issues you will have with the finer aspects of its design? But for me, and this is just me, I cannot speak for anyone else but me, I think it... It is a game with an overwhelming amount of heart, and care, and love, and... Just... It's incredible. I think it's, it is an incredible successor to Mario 64. And I think it's proof that Mario as a franchise is not going to stop being interesting anytime soon. I think it dis more than anything, it has dispelled a lot of fear that I might have had that the Mario franchise might get kind of samey. But I don't think Mario Odyssey, in what it attempted and what it does, makes me worry about that anymore. And I think the uniqueness of the experience combined with just the finer aspects of its design that I think it succeeds at, which is just being an accessible 3D Mario game with amazing movement, in my opinion a very fluid and great progression system that doesn't break up your progress in a way that feels unnatural. Like not even, Mario 64 doesn't do that either. But like, the, the progress system in Odyssey is satisfying and good. I think it can be overwhelming if you don't stop yourself from trying to get absolutely everything sometimes. Because not only is that impossible on the first visit to any kingdom anyways, even if you get, do all the boss shit. I feel like this game is really easy to run yourself ragged on if you're not really careful. Because this game respects your agency a lot and it will not tell you to stop doing something. But that might mean you keep doing something you don't like. But! I think as a game and as an experience, once you complete the darker side of the moon, I think you've seen everything this game has to offer you. And I don't think you need to give it more time unless you want to. And I think the game respects that and even expects it. I think it's designed with that in mind. It's designed so that every player can get to the end of it. Or at least, you know, get a shot at the end of it. Make it. You know, to get through the whole thing, to see it all. While also attempting to be rewarding for longtime Mario players who love exploring and perfecting a really complicated movement system that rewards research, planning, Execution, creativity. And I think it succeeds. In spite of its problems, I think it succeeds at doing that. I know people have talked about wanting an Odyssey 2. I don't know if I want an Odyssey 2. I would like another game that pushes Mario like this. I don't know if I want it to be a sequel in number. I want them to keep doing different things with Mario. 
but I would love for them to look at what this game did and try and do it even better. Because I think if they manage to, that game that is even better than this one, to me, anyways, would probably end up sitting above Mario 3. If this game was any more, like, if this game was any better, to me, it would probably be above Mario 3. But... You know, it's got, like, very... Very, very, like, micro-problems to me. That, while they do subtract from the experience in some way... Namely, just, like... Sometimes it can be overwhelming. I don't usually feel it, but, like, it, it can be daunting. I think it's just such a small thing to me. In the context of what the game is. But if they manage to make a game better than this. I think it would end up being better. I think I'm going to do this, too. I'm going to do one more tier segment. This got difficult to make. But I think... I think that's where I'm at right now. I think this... This is where I sit, I think. If I had to think about it, for a really long time. And I was told... You have to, like, quantifiably rank all of these. Is New Super Mario Brothers too bad? I would say. Yeah. I don't think it's unplayable bad, so maybe what I'll do instead is that. Well, it's not a Wii U game. It's a, it's a 3DS game. The Wii U one is right there. Although, it is kind of easy to confuse these games with each other, isn't it? This is... It's hard. I look at this and I think to myself... Man, like, I would just shift around something just a little bit. But... Oh, I'm missing one. Of course. Now, how could I forget? Mm. 
Where is it? Should be here. If they're including ports, they have to have it, right? Really, they don't. No fucking way they don't have it. No, they couldn't. Huh, they don't have it here. I was gonna put SMBDX. But, uh, looks like it's not here. I guess it's not really that different. But, you know, just checking to make sure I didn't miss any. Yeah, I think that's it. This was so hard. Oh, it was so hard to do. I did the community thing. This is like aggregate over uh, 110. Odyssey is consistently this, huh? Pretty much shared with mine. What do the people shit on? Let's see. Let's see what the people hate. Damn, Mario Golf? Come on, that game is lit! Yeah, okay, and he has open kind of sucks. Wait, is that Wario's Woods? Yeah. But I like that game. How is Lost Levels up in B? I don't know if I trust Mario fans anymore. 3D land in A? Really? Interesting. Fascinating, even. That's really interesting to me. People have very fond memories of it, I guess. NSMB up here, though, that is... Sus. That's kind of sus, I won't lie. Sunshine? Really? Well, I mean, maybe. I guess it depends on who you ask. Where'd Luigi's Mansion 3 end up? Somewhere in here? In this wide spot? Oh no, right, right up there with the other one, right? Yeah, fair. Super Princess Peach definitely deserves better than that, though. Maybe. Mario RPG and C, holy cow. This isn't like one person's list or anything. This is like an aggregate. Mario RPG C, that is strange to me. How the fuck? How do you get to that? Mario RPG? Really? Where's Mario and Luigi Dream Team at? There's Paper Jam, I think. Oh, that's the Superstar Saga remake. There's Paper Jam. Oh man, is Dream Team down here? Or did it, did it end up in B2 somehow? Oh, there it is in C. Okay. Ah, uh, 3D World is an A2. Well, I think that'll be it for me. Thank you everybody for coming out. I'm going to publish this list on Twitter and get like raked at the coals. Uh, have a good evening, everybody. 
this VOD is going to go up soon, and I'm probably going to cut the tier list and section out each video. But... This is this is where I'm at right now. But it's so impossibly hard to do this. It's so hard. Either way, have a good evening. <laughs>